sense. And when you think about how the world of work is moving and people starting to shift to more on-demand labor, off-balance sheet labor, whatever term you want to call it, companies lack the systems and processes to be able to do that at scale and to be able to do it in a way that mitigated their risk. And so that was why we built WorkMarket. WorkMarket is an enterprise software platform that enables corporations to efficiently and compliantly organize, manage, and pay freelancers. So as companies think about the risks they face in engaging the gig economy, the first is this notion of efficiency, that companies that were utilizing spreadsheets or inefficient means sometimes would have 30 to 40 people managing their on-demand labor force. Now with WorkMarket, they have two or three. So that's one, right? Just this, is it that efficient to engage this labor force? But the second and much more powerful one is risk mitigation, right? It's this notion of worker misclassification. Am I utilizing this worker and what if they get hurt? What if she files an unemployment claim? And that's a challenging thing because the laws are confusing, contradictory, and complex. So how do I as a HR professional get comfortable that I am mitigating my company's risk with engaging this increasingly important part of the workforce? There are a lot of startups that are starting to go after this ecosystem and a lot of very large companies like banks and mortgage lenders and car lenders. How do you go and get a mortgage if all you have is a series of 1099s, right? A mortgage application requires your W-2 and your W-2 history and it starts to create an opportunity as the economy shifts more and more to an on-demand structure for very large corporations to start thinking about this. How do we create the programs that allow the on-demand workers to be able to engage as if there was no difference? So when I think about why customers want to engage an on-demand labor force, the first thing is they already were, but they never knew who was where, who signed what legal agreement, who's working on what, who's good at what. And so that was the first use case. The second, are companies that are thinking about that journey because they want to be where those companies are. And where those companies are, by the way, is they have a agile enterprise. They've helped take one of their largest costs, labor, which was predominantly a fixed cost, and they've turned it into more of a variable cost. So they've helped build flexibility into their enterprise. That's reason number one. And reason number two is they want to be able to meet talent where it is. There are certain workers and certain geographies, certain skill sets that simply don't want full-time jobs. And if, as a company, you want to engage that talent, you've got to be able to meet talent where it is. Therefore, you need a program that engages full-time workers, part-time workers, temps, and freelancers, all in one labor plane. And if you exclude one part of that, you are leaving yourself out of being able to engage some of the most talented workers out there. The ability to manage all of your talent in one place, the ability to allow that talent to form teams, the ability to have a system that can engage work on a task or project basis, those become a necessity when you think about the future state of labor. What becomes incredibly important is making sure that you're systematizing all of your on-demand labor and via API tying it into your full-time labor. Because if you're not taking that first step today, you're going to be behind as this future starts to take shape over the next five to 10 years. The worker in the gig economy today, in the on-demand economy, is more satisfied with their employment relationship. So when we think about the on-demand economy permeating the full-time labor force, that doesn't seem like such a bad thing.